everybody. Welcome back. It's the first week of September, and that means that I want to decorate my house for fall ASAP. So I went out looking for some decor that's new just to kind of like spruce up the vibe in my space. I'm going to be using some of the old stuff I had from last year, but I just wanted to try something new. And unfortunately, I couldn't really find anything out there that felt like my, my style and it didn't really resonate with me. A lot of it felt kind of, you know, straightforward and just typical, like orange pumpkins and and maple leaves and stuff like that. So I thought I would maybe like make my own and do a DIY fall decor video with you guys. I really was inspired by like maybe a more organic and elevated vibe, but I don't want to spend a lot of money. And I also still want it to feel cozy though. Like I do want some kind of like pumpkin-y fall thing. So I want to share with you five ideas that I came up with from the dollar store and Ikea that maybe you could copy at home if you felt inspired to do so. So let's jump into it. So here we're making some really earthy pumpkins that smell really good. So I'm using these plush pumpkins and this pumpkin spice fragrance broom as well as some floral moss and then some Gorilla Glue. And these little finger protectors are so helpful for hot glue projects. And you just wanna dump the floral foam out and rip it up into tiny little pieces. I even cut it up with scissors after ripping it up with my fingers. And then I'm just covering up one section of the pumpkin here. And I wanna load it up with a ton of glue and a ton of moss and I'm putting on my finger protectors because I really just want to press in as much moss as I possibly can get on there and let it dry completely and then I can edit and take off all of the extra loose pieces so that it's a little bit more conformed to the size of the pumpkin and then this is where it starts to really smell like fall so you want to carefully unwrap and uncoil these little pieces of twine from this little broom and then take apart every little twig piece and just see how bendable they are this one is really kind of stiff but as you can see this one is very bendy and we're gonna put them underneath this little trunk piece with some hot glue and I want to basically outline this little moss area that I've made with the pumpkin spice broomstick and we'll just glue it onto the bottom here and cover it up with some moss in order to hold it there and this makes this section really defined This stick ended up looking a little bit small, so I just added another one on top and just trimmed away any flyaway pieces. And then this is just a repetitive process afterward. Just keep going all throughout the pumpkin and create your little sections. Once you've glued all the sections down, you just want to put a ton of hot glue on the bottom and then press a lot of this floral moss onto it to just kind of seal it. And then I just trimmed off some extra flyaway pieces and continued on with making my little sections here. The big trick here is to just keep kind of pinching it so that you don't cover up your little wood dividers because the wood dividers are what's kind of insinuating the pumpkin shape. <laughs> Once you're finished, you can just dump all the excess floral moss on here and then add a glob of hot glue on top. And we can add our little curly Q twine piece to give it that little pumpkin vine flare and then cover it with some moss to hide all that glue. And now you have some beautiful organic looking pumpkins that smell amazing. So this is a really fun and easy DIY with the Ikea Trampa doormat. It's the smaller one that's only $8. And I wanted to add this like interesting fall inspired plaid pattern, kind of like the tablecloth I have here, but I didn't want to make it super complicated with all these tiny little lines. So my solution was to kind of create this checkerboard stencil. So I figured out that evenly I could fit about 10 squares across and seven squares down. And the numbers were pretty specific. So you can see my math on the corner here. I'll put up the exact measurement if you want 
want to recreate this at home. But as you can see, I'm making a grid-like pattern here and it's almost kind of checkerboard, but I'm skipping every other line. And I just made this with a poster board from the Dollar Tree and then I grabbed two more to use as shields because I'm going to spray paint different gradients of colors on here. And I pulled all these colors from this spray paint box I had in the garage. I tried to find things that looked similar in color. So kind of a bluish green and a blue and then a lighter green and a dark brown and a lighter brown. But the one spray paint I did buy was this satin brick color from Lowe's and I really like it a lot. It's kind of that matte orangey reddish brown color and it reminds me of fall. And so I'm just going to continue to move this over and add in my colors here and then we'll let it dry. And you'll notice here that when I'm spraying the matte, the colors aren't as saturated, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I also didn't tape down the stencil because I thought it might be kind of interesting if the colors low key kind of blended into the other one because in a plaid pattern, there's so many different gradients and layers of complementary colors. So I was kind of hoping for some kind of natural gradient. And thankfully you can kind of see this natural light gradient on some of the lines. And I thought that really added to the plaid look. And then once this was dry, I just taped off some of the empty squares and sprayed in my other complementary colors. <laughs> didn't have another complimentary red, but I did have vintage gold and I thought adding it with a layer of this sea glass paint would kind of maybe change the color and make it look a little bit different. And it totally did show up as like a goldish red. So don't be afraid to layer your spray paint. So I've been really wanting to make a wreath, but I only found a couple florals at the Dollar Tree in the fall section that looked realistic, but I did have some clippings from my backyard. There's eucalyptus and some dried leaves from like an archway that we have. And I thought I could use the Dollar Tree's wire wreath frame as well as their foam one and add in some garden wire, which I also got from the dollar store. And then I'll just use some of these natural dried leaves as the base of my wreath and then add in some of those realistic dollar store fall florals for some color. So so the first thing you want to do is glue the foam to the wire framing. I don't know if you traditionally do this, but I wanted to have something to attach this branch to, but I also wanted a more defined center to add in some more florals and leaves later on. So I'm starting by using these skinnier branches and weaving them through the wire framing and then securing them with some of the garden wire. I also suggest you use wire cutters. I just couldn't find mine and luckily the scissors worked out just fine. So as you can see, I'm putting all of these branches in one direction. I chose clockwise, but you can go counterclockwise and you can do whatever you want to be honest. I just think putting it in one direction gives it more of that circular wreath-like look. Once I kind of have this set base here, I'm just gonna add some glue to add some of the shorter stems to fill up this foam area a little bit. I decided to also add a layer of this eucalyptus, but going in the opposite direction, just to kind of fill it out and make it feel a little bit more festive. I kind of like the idea that this green wreath will just slowly die away as September and October pass on. And it's kind of just representative of how our seasons are changing right now. And I think the more that it dries and browns, it'll just add to the fall theme of my decor. I 
I love that the majority of this wreath is made out of materials just right out of my backyard. You don't always have to spend a lot of money to make something really interesting and something that's personal that speaks to you. I feel like I really enjoyed this process. It was kind of therapeutic thinking about the seasons changing and it felt really great to just be touching some natural materials. But I also just wanted to add in some of these dollar store florals to give it a little bit more depth and more of that like fall decor flair. However, I think easily I could have just stopped there with the brown leaves and used that as my wreath, but I decided to explore what else I could do creatively here. So I thought this one would be really great to create a center circle here. So I cut each strand off so that it fit all together and just continue to build around that. And in an effort to not waste one of these florals, I actually cut off the leaves and put them around here as well. And I actually ended up also cutting them in half sometimes or in thirds so that I could kind of extend them all around the wreath here. I thought this looked really fun and I just wanted to add in a little bit of color as it was all kind of monotone. And I think adding in purpley reds in the fall is so interesting, but these big mums just felt way too big. And I kind of liked these yellow pods that I get from Trader Joe's pretty often, but I looked out the window and I saw these little offshoots that I had on some weird palm tree that I have in my front yard. So I thought the pinkish green color looked great here. And then I grabbed these baby mums and I just decided to add them as like a little topper just to secure in all these little pieces that I had added around the center. And I kind of liked the symmetrical look of it. I highly suggest you just test out a bunch of different florals and leaves and see what you can come up with. It really puts you in the fall spirit, even if it's 98 degrees outside. All you Trader Joe's fans out there, I think are really gonna love this one. I found this really interesting tray at the dollar store. I kind of like the design on it. And I also picked up this little container that I think I can make into a candle holder, but I don't like the silver. So I'm just gonna spray it with some vintage gold spray paint. And then while that dries, I thought the best option here to keep the design on the tray would be to put some rub and buff on there so that you could still see the really faint engravings. But as you can see, it was not working out at all, but I didn't wanna totally match the tray to the top of the candle holder. So I got this hammered gold that I used on my bar cart in my last video and just sprayed a really light layer over this. And then once it dried, that's when I added in the rub and buff, but I only added it on the areas with this texture. And the spray paint, unfortunately, did hide some of that faint engraving in the center, but I do kind of like the duo tone of this hammered gold and the rub and buff around the edge. Okay, so I always love going to Trader Joe's and getting vanilla pumpkin candles every year. They smell so good, but they're in really ugly containers. So you can put them in a pan with about a third of the water covering the jar and let it boil so that the wax melts and we can transfer this wax into our jar. But the more that it boils, the more that the water level goes down. So just keep an eye on it. As we wait for the wax to melt, we'll need to put a brand new taller wick inside the jar. I got these really nice wood ones that kind of crackle when I was really into candles over COVID. And I think it's gonna give this candle such a fall vibe. I highly suggest using a funnel here so you don't get candle wax everywhere. And I ended up using about one and a half candles to fill this up. And then I just held the wick straight with two chopsticks. And once it was dry, I just trimmed the wick.
For this project, you're going to need this girly pillowcase from Ikea. This color was only $6.99, and I'm just going to open it up here and stick some cardboard on the inside. I have this old Amazon box as well as an Amazon package. This size was a 20 by 20, and I wanna make sure to fill the center and make it as flat as possible. Our next step includes a 50-50 solution of water and bleach, and we're gonna just put it in this spray bottle that I got from the dollar store. And then I got this plastic stencil from Michaels for about like eight bucks with a pack of a bunch of other ones. And I've made this really funny makeshift barrier for it out of old plastic bags. And I'm putting it on top of here, right in the center, just trying to make sure that the borders on all sides are even. And then I'm just using some small rocks to hold this down so it doesn't blow away. And we're just gonna spray this with the bleach solution to kind of make an organic imprint on this pillowcase. And I haven't done this before, but my recommendations is to definitely make sure that your spray bottle is on spray and not stream. You don't want to oversaturate the pillowcase with liquid because then it'll just bleed. You want to do a really light mist and then you'll blot the plastic with a paper towel so these beads of bleach and water don't oversaturate the pillowcase as well. But I would also suggest to not press too hard because then you'll be the one making the bleach mixture bleed through. So once you let that dry, you'll have this really Really pretty organic imprint on the pillow and if you want it to be a little bit brighter I would just suggest to leave it out in the Sun longer but I kind of wanted mine to be a little bit more subtle so to stop the bleaching process you dunk it into a bowl of a 50 50 solution of water and hydrogen peroxide and that will seal what you've done on your pillowcase I think my favorite thing to make was the doormat. It just came out really graphic and I love the pattern and the colors. It does really feel like fall, but it's alternative. And that was kind of the goal here is like, how do I make something that doesn't feel super on the nose, super fall, Thanksgiving-ish, but also feels kind of like we're changing seasons and color themes in the house. So I really like how these turned out and I'm so excited to decorate the house for fall. I've been collecting some decor at thrift stores and I'm gonna show you that in an upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that. And I've also got my dining room makeover coming up in the next week or two. So make sure you hit that bell so you can be alerted when I release new videos. But other than that, I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.